Good morning, and I say you all to a lot of friends from Seoul National University and the friends from Korea. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning uh, with the PGM International Symposium 2021, Traditions in Transition. So this is already our fourth day, and we've been discussing um, many ideas about what traditions can mean, what transitions can be, and how us as a musicians and artists can work towards uh, these ideas and collaborating together from all over the world. So today I'm really proud to um, be introducing you to the uh, paper sessions from friends from Korea, from Singapore, and also our friends in Thailand as well. So and I'm really honored also to be introducing Dr. Tanapon uh, Seta Pram, a very renowned um, conductor in Thailand. He's also a thinker philosopher and also a really wonderful presenters of music of many genres. So today, uh, Dr. Tanapon will be our moderators and you'll hear him speak a very good Korean today. So uh, have a good morning and please uh, welcome Dr. Tanapon. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to PGVIS Symposium this morning. So um, I believe this morning we will be hearing a lot of interesting topics um, on the um, the performing of arts that combined um, several um, kind of arts and music genre together. So the first session on the first panel today is on the topic of a hybrid performance of Yebul in the pandemic era by our presenter, um, Jun Chi Park. So I would like to hand this um, discussion to our presenter. So Yun Ji, would you please? Yeah introduce to us the uh, project and um, the ideas and concepts of the performance. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, hello, good morning. I'm Yunji Bak and I will introduce about the music project. It is Yebul. I'm currently earning my PhD in composition major in Department of Korean Music at Seoul National University. From year 2020, I have been the coordinator of Project Yebul. Today, I would like to explain about producing hybrid performance in pandemic era through the collaborative efforts in making a new rendition of Yebul. First of all, I will briefly introduce Seokhi Gang, who composed Yebul. Next, I will explain the three versions of Yebul, the original, the, the 2020 online version, and the 2021 hybrid performance version. Composer Seokhi Gang was born in Seoul in 1934. He is a pioneer of modern Korean music. He composed Korea's first electronic music called the Feast of Primary Colors in 1966 and released Prometheus Comes, the first music in history to incorporate computer music into the torch relay at the 1988 Seoul Olympics. In 1969, he hosted the Seoul Modern Music Biennale, the first modern music festival in Korea. He taught as a professor from the Department of Composition in the College of Music at Seoul National University. One of his earliest work, Yebul, was created based on various sounds of Buddhist music and Korean traditional sounds, such as Korean taffy sellers' scissors, Korean traditional cauldron lead, and stero shoes. This is a grand piece of work that requires 30 percussionist, male choirs, and a male solo voice. So the music was an, an innovative piece of work, but has been forgotten for nearly 50 years after the first performance. Uh, 
SND Music has decided to produce the re new rendition of this work in a different way after 53 years of its premiere. From September 2020, the project started in order to com commemorate Seokhi Kang. The new version of Yebu was produced in a completely non-face-to-face -face manner because because the music itself is a large scale instrumentation, which makes it difficult for many players to gather on a stage during the pandemic era. This is a trailer video. First of all, for the percussions, SNN music utilized the sampling of virtual instruments and Korean traditional instruments. SNN music used the sound of a traditional Korean instrument recorded by National Korean Traditional Music Center from its website. National Gugak Center allows people to download the sounds of each instrument, which are individually played in various notes and phrases. If the sound of a required instruments couldn't be found, Ascension music players recorded the percussion sounds with their own instruments. For the sound of VSTI, we used the sound of virtual Korean traditional instruments made by Center for Arts and Technologies at Seoul National University. By using the sound editing programs such as Cubase and Logic Pro, the sound source was transfigured and arranged in each timeline to complete the percussion part. Uh, next, for the choir part, singers recorded the voices with their devices, uh, such as cell phones after music score, guideline, and guide sound source with met met uh, metronome sound was distributed. Then, the different files of recorded voices were combined, and Sunil Music finally completed the choir part. In 2021, to extend the sta stage of performing Yebu to an online platform, the attempt of combining sound and the video was made. In this music video, Yi Hu An, the member of InArch, performed as the soloist. The video was first released through YouTube on February 17, 2021. In the music video, director Sangman Kim tried things that cannot be easily done on stage. 
The main character of the music video, the soloist, acts as a Buddhist monk and an ordinary person in the city. As the performer acts and sings with many different styles of performance, the scenery of nature and the campus of SNU is shown. Also, the usage of vivid colors and quick turn around the scenes gives an interesting visual effect to the audience. Uh, now let's watch the part of a music video of Yebul. music video won the Best Experimental Film Award at the 2021 LA Film Festival. For the last, SNU Music is preparing the innovative hybrid performances, timely with the first annually comm commemoration of composer Gang's death this August. A tribute to Seokki Kang is the collaborate performance with the SNU Music and Sejong Soloist. Performance will map out the journey of Seokki Gang as an artist. To prepare for the performance in August, SNU Music went to the Arco Art Archive and looked up the materials of composer Gang. The Arco Art Archive have well preserved composer Kang's old music sources, lead tapes, and handwriting scores, just as they were. SNU Music will use them as the media sound and visual material at the performance. Part one consists of his four songs. Part one will be the performance of one continuous narration of the songs, instead of the individual performances of four different songs. First, the feast of primary colors will start the stage. The song expresses the first dimensional world where only black and white and three primary colors exist. As the song progresses, the next song, Prometheus comes, the music and scene become vibrant with many different colors. 
The intention was to describe to encounter a new paradigm of humanity after Prometheus gives the fire to humans. This transition can be found through the stage of view for Kayakum. The part four and five of this song is arranged at the front and back of Prometheus comes to show the changes in colors. Part four implies monochrome before the colors and part five alludes to the scene with the various colors. video become a various color video. At that, the final song Yebul describes humanity living in the world of higher dimension, facing limitation and despair, and wanting to reach Nirvana through Buddhist service. We are planning to show a minimal edited video by reducing the image and speed of the video produced in the 2020 Yebul edition. This stage will be, will be the inter interweaved sound of media sound source and live performance consisting of choir, solo voice, and percussion instruments. This performance will combine three versions of the sound of Yebul. The origin version of Yebul, recorded during the premiere of the song in 1968. Second is the Yebul, recorded in fully remote and contactless manner in 2020. And the live performance of Yebul at the Seoul Art Center will be played simultaneously on the stage. The yellow colored part in the score is the sound from 1968. The green part is the sound, is the sound from year 2020. And the blue part will be played live by players on the stage. The table on the screen shows the section of each version of Yebul throughout the entire music. The first part starts with the origin, original version and the new version and the live performance would play the song back and forth. At the center of the song, the three sound sources will appear forming the climax of the performance. Today, I have shown you the efforts of SNU music constantly making various attempts even in the time of pandemic. Even if, even if it was before pandemic, the song was so large scaled that it is difficult to be put on stage. However, it was produced in a non-face-to-face -face manner. In addition, 
by making an attempt to collaborate with video, which could not be done in stage performance, the SNU music expanded the scope of the activities into the online platform and gave meaning to the reproduction of the song for the first time in 53 years. I hope that artists living in the present age do not think of pandemic as time of a despair, but as a golden opportunity to implement novel ideas in a new way. SNU Music will also accept this change in art history that has already begun, challenge each moment fiercely, and continue to work passionately every time. That's all I have prepared for you today. Thank you, for very, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, thank you, um, Yunji Park, for your presentation. So now I would like to um, open the floor for any question that anyone may have. Okay, so um, let me read one question in our chat box um, from Shin A. Kim uh, asking, I wonder what was difficult about the project in a non-face-to-face -face manner? And was there an advantage of the non-face-to-face? -face? Ah, okay. Uh, The difficulty of uh, non-face-to-face -face is um, that it is difficult to communicate uh, accurately and quickly. It is, uh, if it is not shared immediately when a small problem occurs, it can become a big problem. So the members had to constantly exchange, uh, exchange situations through Zoom or cell phone messengers. And the advantage is that the range of imagination increases. It was difficult because it was completely different from the existing, uh, existing method of producing performances. However, the possibility and imagine, imaginable scope of solving the difficulties haven't widened. Would that be an answer? Okay, thank you. Is there any more question to our presenter? Feel free to um, raise hands. Let me see if I can um, see everyone here. Um, participant. Feel free to type the any questions you may have in the chat box or the Q&A. Mm. And so, um, Probably if I, I'm actually very interested in the first video that, that you show. So, so that one was the original video, was it? That presented in, in the film festival, right? Um, okay, so we have more question to our presenter, do you find the changing medium form uh, convert to film challenging? Is there anything um, that is missing? Or is there anything that is new when you change from convert to film? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
yes, I think it's a challenge because it's a completely uh, different form. So it have many difficult, difficult, uh, and from concert to fill what's there and what is missing. You, you in case here. Hey, I'm with Mida. Oh, from a uh, concert to Wait a minute. Sure. Um, so maybe if there anything um, difficult for the ensemble, um, or you need to you know combine more uh, of the pre-recorded sound, and if there are any um, specific technique or method that that you use or you find challenging. Uh, I can support uh, her answer. Like. Um, from um, um, concert to, to um, film, um, like uh, that should be record the whole sound and then also um, the singer and uh, an actor um, have to memorize everything like uh, the uh, music and also action because in the concert the singer only can just uh, sing it on stage but in the film the uh, singer have to uh, acting and singing uh, with the scene so it, it that was very uh, different and then challenge moment also uh, the pre record sound is uh, um, is, is quite good uh, challenging because we can um, collect and then put together um, uh, more like a large ensemble uh, because uh, when we make the concert they it was difficult to um, uh, combine many people but like uh, in pre-record like uh, we can put the like the layer with the program so it was a uh, very good challenging I think yeah that is diff a different point with the concert. Okay. I hope this is a yeah, good answer. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you both, uh, Yuli and, and Yunji Park for, um, for um, uh, presenting um, the idea. So I think it's about time that we will move on to the next uh, presentation. So this is with Yuli, right? So you will be um, presenting to us um, the uh, the song and dance for New Hope. So from what I read from the description, I think it's very interesting um, in the, the uh, session, I mean, the, the presentation that we just ended, we talked about um, the, some kind of rituals also, right? Something about Prometheus and fire and some Korean Buddhist sound. And now we're going to move on to, you know, from the Buddhist sound to something a little more ancient Right, something more of the um, uh, Korean ancient ritual and shamans, the good. Right. Okay. So yeah. I will hand this presentation to you. Yeah. Thank you for good introducing. He already talked about my own presentation, but like I'm just to give some example, and then I will just talk about our new production. Uh, give me a sec. I'll just uh, share my screen. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. 안녕하세요. It's a uh, Korea. Say hello. <laughs> and I'm Yuli, and I'm a production manager uh, in K Music Maker South Korea, uh, which is a, a media content company. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to show you a presentation about our new production. 
As I introduce myself, I'm a professional production manager in opera, music, uh, musical, and play. But uh, I am not a professional musician and a music researcher. But I just try to um, do my best um, for introducing our new performance in the aspect of performance production. So if you have any question, please feel free to ask me at the end of the um, presentation. OK. Now I'm going to talk about uh, a, a concept of new production, which is based on our uh, Korean tradition rights. The presentation is uh, going to be in three steps from the past and future of Korean traditional ritual called good. Um, take a look at this picture. It looks very colorful, and then that's lots. Uh, there is a lots of audience. <laughs> it's a scene of Korean traditional ritual. It doesn't look like um, serious. Um, it's not serious, right? Um, it looks more like a party because you can recognize very colorful decorations and some musician and dancer and large audience. The uh, good is the name of uh, the rite performed by Korean shaman, involving offerings and sacrifice to God, spirit, uh, spirit and ancestor. They are characterized by rhythmic movements, songs, oracles, and prayers. These rites are meant to create well-being and promote commitment between the spirit and humankind. There is a shaman. You can uh, see the um, woman who is a stand and then held a hand fan, and she is a leader of a communicator in good between people and God, spirit, and ancestor, and so on. It can be she or it can be he or she or he lead good as dancing, singing, and praying with uh, traditional music. Good is found in the Korean historical book called Dongguk Isangjip, which is a compilation book that was written in 1241 by Goryeo Igyubo. It was the first time to, re to be recorded in history, but many uh, scholars think that it originated a long time before this. Good is passed down as a various version as the aim of ritual. For example, good is performed for luck, exorcism, healing, heavenly bliss, and abundance. Also, there are different versions of good uh, that depends on their location. It usually consists of 10 steps, which is singing, dancing, um, being an uh, integral part of them. That picture um, drawed in uh, late 18th century. So that means a, uh, good is a very like uh, traditional uh, music in Korea. So um, we're going to develop a new performance with good. We hope in to introduce this, uh, is this to young generation. So uh, I introduced a person who gave the uh, inspiration of our new production. Um, his name uh, is Oh Young Lok. Uh, he was a professor of Korean music in music college at Seoul National University, Korea. He's endeavored to maintain the traditional culture, especially um, local music. Following an interview from his student, they mentioned the same point in his lecture, which was an uh, emphasis how important it was to preserve Korea's tradition, traditional local music such as uh, traditional percussions and good. He usually attends local events such as a ritual and traditional percussion. Unfortunately, he died very suddenly. And so his popular want, wanted to commemorate and honor his passing. So his student uh, made the plan of Kwanak Ogugut. Ogugut is performed to transfer the soul uh, of the dead to the underworld. Ogugut is used as a lo location name when it makes uh, the good. Kwanak means the place name where Seoul National University is located. It is the location where Professor O taught to, um, Korean music. Now, uh, we are going to watch the video of Kwanak Ogugut that was performed in um, 2013. Yeah. 
옆이 봐주시고 Yeah, how did you view this video? Mm, did they look sad, joyful, or uh, like many uh, audience uh, like uh, was dancing and like singing and uh, enjoying uh, as uh, grabbing the clothes like playing something. <laughs> so I think they seem to enjoy the whole ritual. So following this idea, K Music Makers started a new performance with Good. So what kind of possibilities can we see in good as a performing art? Um, we can, uh, we think it could be developed as an emotive theater. Um, the original format of good involves people from the whole town. 
They are not only part of the audience, it's not passive audience, uh, but they also can be participant in the ritual more actively. It is kind of party to create um, well-being and to promote commitment between the spirit and humankind. Furthermore, it will have to continue, um, continue our own traditional culture from a new angle. So like good, uh, good contains like a Korean tradition music, also Korean tradition dance and many like Korean tradition art. So it is very like uh, multi um, arts. It can be multi art uh, in Korea. So there are, I will introduce a very um, in incredible and talented young musicians. Their name is Bang Song. They show and perform traditional music more broadly and freely and have to their uh, thought into their performance. They expand the Korean current, current traditional music to give it a new interpretation. Bang Song will perform a new production of good that is the song and dance for new hope. Last March, uh, the first ritual was led by uh, Jion Bang, the, the, let, um, the let uh, side man. He was one of a professor or student and an um, accomplished um, Korean music percussionist. So let's watch the uh, last March lecture. <laughs> Yeah. 
그분을 좋아하시고 바라셨던 그런 뜻을 가지고 예, 나중에 또 훌륭한 작품이 안 나오겠습니까? 그죠? 그렇게 되면 다 만들어주시고 만들어주셔가지고 At the time, um, that is very uh, serious moment um, in Korea due to pandemic. So, so we just uh, made the plan very minimized, and so so you want just play the uh, percussion alone and also singing alone. So, uh, through this um, ritual, like uh, we got another mission. Like, uh, how can we uh, play? this new performance with the various audience uh, in any situation. So that I think that is a, uh, our another mission. So the aim of um, the song and dance uh, for New Hope is not only to follow the traditional culture, but to develop our own culture with a new interpretation for the current generation. Uh, we wish this result of giving um, people some enjoyment during this pandemic. So yeah, that's all my presentation. So if you have any question, just ask me now, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I would like to open the floor for any um, discussion or, or question that anyone may have. Yeah. So and while we are waiting for the possible question, so maybe let me ask you out of curiosity that, um, you know, this uh, visual activity of the good, um, at some point, has it ever fused with the traditional Korean Buddhism at all? Um, I mean, this activity of maybe dancing and singing, like, for example, does this kind of singing fuse into the way Korean Buddhist monk chant or anything like that? Um, as that is one of the uh, version. It can it can be, but like, uh, but uh, it relates a little bit with the Buddhism. But it's a um, kind of shaman as well. So yeah, I can't say it's not only for. Uh, is it not only related with the Buddhism? Yeah. And maybe my um, next question would be this activity of performing you know, performing percussion or singing or whatever, does it consider, you know, from the modern studies perspective, it, does it um, consider some kind of, of a, a recreation activity for the performer also, or it's more of a projection toward the, the soul and the disease? Um, uh, So, so, so the, you mean the like uh, making modern way or? Yeah, I mean, I mean, for yeah. so, for example, in yeah. um, in in the old time now, we we mm. we think of it as we making sound and mm. as a message, right? As a as a a method for for sending the soul. Is is that is that what 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 is purpose? Ah, uh, no, like um. That's like a traditional way, but like through the new performance, like we just make a wish and not sending the soul. Like Ugugud is like uh, for the sending the soul, but there is a lots of version of the good. So we just pick up like one version that is like for make a wish for the for everyone or like pray for people's well being, that kind of things. So. So maybe our version is not for like ascending the soul and that is not related really much about the religious thing. Yeah. Got it. Okay, yeah. I got one question here. Uh, yeah. Can you foresee that in the future, yeah. film or the medium that you've explored can be a new standard for good? Uh, if we make well the like uh, <laughs> offering version, like we just uh, like we hope to, and then I, I wish, in my aspect, like uh, I wish to make my like documentary of the how to develop um, the traditional good to like modern rights, modern rights. So, yeah, I wish. <laughs> uh, 
any other question? And let's see. Yeah. Um, would you explain a little bit about the theatrical aspect of, of the traditional good and maybe versus the, the new kind of good that, that you explore? Uh, in, in aspect of the theater, uh, theater. Uh, uh, um, like, uh, uh, as I mentioned in the presentation, like uh, we just try to make the like more immersive theater, like uh, uh, the audience can um, come and join uh, on stage and with the, like um, with the musician and uh, leader, because the, in the past, the audience just come around um, the, a good place and they just watching and they just listening. But so like the modern version, like uh, as like our new performance, like more make um, opportunity to give the uh, audience on stage, yeah. So can I say, can I say, phrase it in this way, that the traditional way of good was that it's a, uh, the event where people gather and being just a passive spectator. Yeah. Like that. And then yeah. the, 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 now your mm -hmm. re revised version is that the, it, it can become a sort of a social gathering event where the audience, you know, status is transformed into a, active par participants. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> Good phrasing. <laughs> and and maybe the it, it so it has become also um, the you know you talk about the 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 hopeful the hopefulness and, and a positiveness right of, of the emotion or whatever. So now it can become some sort of recreational activity also is that yeah is that what it is yeah we hope to make that way yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you for good understanding. <laughs> yeah, is there any um, other question or if, if, if there are any subtle topic that, that or, or subtle angle of the content that, that you'd like to explore and explain more? We got some more time for you. Uh, um, I think like, uh, we can, uh, why we choose this good? Um, because uh, as I mentioned in presentation, um, good contains like the whole culture of Korean, like culture, so the Korean art. So I think it is very good, um, uh, good, I can't say platform, but it, it is a very good channel to um, show our culture. Or, uh, to young generation because uh, people think about good is very quite old uh, and traditional thing and me in my case uh, I was very difficult to see um, good uh, in my generation but if I want to see the good I have to go very specific place like a very countryside or like in the mountain or near the uh, ocean but like uh, I wish like uh, if we make this uh, uh, production, uh, we just want to play in the city and then like a young generation or like a foreigner can come to Egypt and enjoy, enjoy this production yeah, together, yeah. You know, here's my, just my personal comment that I, I find on this kind of, mm. of um, uh, activity very 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 interesting is that it it really helped connect the people in the that more attuned to the modern way of life like very modernized lifestyle yeah. now that it it sort of um help us connect to our our root and something a little bit spiritual something out of the ordinary um you know um modern way of life that is drawn by by a, a lot of a lot of you know a lot of cha chaotic things yeah <laughs> right you know, and, and all the modern myth i i i don't want to say sci scientific but something of a modern mm. myth, you know that that, yeah. that sort of draws away from mm -hmm. from many things that probably our collective mm. uh, spirit mm. uh, still um, need to reconnect more yeah 
Um, do you have any comment for someone else um, who want to try exploring this medium? So if there is any, anyone who want to, to do something like this, do you have any suggestion for them? Mm. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> well, I, I think the, the, the way that you did, um, it was a good example of oh. how to adapt the, the ancient rites for the, our the way, yeah. modern population. Yeah. <laughs> Hope to just maintain it, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. thank you very much for um, provide us the very very um, nice idea and example of your works. So I think I think we appreciate it. And actually, I, I get a lot of thinking after watching the videos. So thank oh, you very much. much. Yeah, thank you for watching everything, and then thank you for attending everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, we already um, done with. The two presentations and the first one, you know, the the, the first the first one was um, you know related to some kind of um, traditional Korean Buddhist um, activities and music and something about Prometheus, right? So so we we already explored that kind of um, ancient rite already, and then it connected to the second presentation, which was just ended and. Um, it became something about um, good, which is uh, ancient, right? And also connected to the souls and spirits and, and shamanism in um, ancient Korea. So our, our next presentation also related a little bit to the um, Korean arts also, but now it's not um, Buddhism or shamanism, but it is about the Korean uh, martial arts that is very interesting, Korean martial arts. Um, Taekwondo, as we may know, I, I believe, um, at least in Thailand here, um, we, we know it very well, at, at least at least me, myself, studied a bit of Taekwondo in, in <laughs> uh, when I was younger. So um, now I think the topic is very interesting. Another metaphor of traditions in transition from a mission in Taekwondo to transmission in Thai traditional music. So this is becoming very interesting um, because the Thai traditional, Thai traditional music now, um, you know, or in the era where, you know, um, in transition, we can say, you know, in transition. So um, I would like to welcome um, Dr. Daniya Utaisu from Jilalongkorn University to present to us um, her ideas about uh, Taekwondo and Thai music. So please welcome. Thank you so much, Achan <laughs> Um I'm so pleased to be here once again. This is the fourth year, uh, fourth day of the conference. And uh, um, today I'd like to talk a little bit like um, in, in less academic, but also as some, some sense of uh, academic concepts that apply to, to, uh, to um, both music and sport so-called martial art. <laughs> Thank you for tidying up with the Korean art and Korean martial art at Antenna Pond. <laughs> okay, so my topic is about from a mission to transmission. From, from a mission from Taekwondo to a transmission in Thai traditional music. Okay, um, I think this is, I'd like to pay an honor to a, uh, an athlete who, or, or all of the athletes who, who practice and also all the musicians who were also practicing a lot when they are doing or perfecting their works. So I think both of us, both athletes and musicians share similarities in many different ways. Okay, let's say how we are going to tie it up with this topic for only um, 30 minutes of 20 minutes or so, okay? All right, from a mission in Taekwondo to a transmission in Thailand. All right, thank you for tennis, non-tennis, who bring, brought back gold medal to Thai, Thailand. Okay, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about introduction of how I am coming about uh, this topic. Watching uh, Olympic Games, uh, Tokyo 2000, 
um, 20. Uh, there are many, many sports to, for us to enjoy. And one of this, one kind of this sport comes to my mind and my whole family who are, uh, my husband is a swimmer and I myself is a gymnast. We were competing in many um, games um, and we are following uh, those sports that had been developed in few times. One of the sport is Taekwondo. Uh -huh. If you can see Taekwondo right now in this year in this Olympic game has been developed and changed. They are put many uh, um, specific rules. They put, um, they call it uh, the, the, the protection and how to make the score by using the IT technique electronic. That makes sense because in terms of to be able to uh, make communication with all authors, as many as we would like to, we have to be precise, we have to be valid. So when we were watching Taekwondo, comparing to when we were watching the rhythmic gymnastic, this is the, the very own sport that I was playing when I was young too. Questions come to my mind that after, right after the performance of the rhythmic gymnastic, there will be like an argument or we call inquiry that the coaches we walk into the podium, walk to the judges panel and ask for inquiry. Would this be changed? And that has to be changed, that has to be counted. And I think, well, this uh, brings concern to me that in order to be uh, internationally accepted or in order to be grown up, to be further, to be mature, to progress to the future, I think the items or the, the topic has to be in, uh, in terms of validity, to be able to uh, understand clearly, precisely with everyone. Okay, so as we now see that Taekwondo use um, technology combining with uh, the ancient martial arts, I have to respect all of those many Asian martial arts that has been prolonged or has been in historical background of all of us. Um, be as respectful as be proudly present, we have to make sure that how we are going to carry on, carry on our heritage to the future, okay? So that our young generations can understand and not questioning, well, that is too old, that is too ritual, that is too scary, that is too bloody in terms of some kind of martial art that is uh, very aggressive. You will see that the process of developing the Taekwondo comes from the very aggressive arts into the very technical arts, uh, martial arts, okay. So look at how we are going to do with our own heritage, which is very dearly to my heart. Many Thai students had to study Thai traditional music during their uh, 12 years of uh, basic school studies. So I am, I, I would like to show you what I found here. See, the people who want to protect or want to uh, make Taekwondo becomes widely accepted or widely known in internationally, they are trying to reform. They are aware of what is the situation, the current trends and needs, okay? They are looking at the rule, looking at how competitive, how coaching and practicing would help process to the future, okay? So instead of being very aggressive, it becomes more highly uh, trained, with faster and stronger, not only the force, but also the technique, 
Okay, so new rules for Taekwondo take imme immediate effect. Since, since uh, 2010, and then move on to 2017 and so far right now, okay? There are some research talks about uh, how they uh, put it into concern and dare to change and brave to develop, okay? So I happen to look at to one of the research Research and see the areas of concern. They are concerning about the rules. Is the rules still good enough? They are concerning about the technology. Is technology going to be helping? They are concerning about the tactic. What are the tactics that should be go on, move on forward to go into Olympic Games, not only to be like a national sport competition, but also international. Okay, so one of the major points I'd like to con uh, consider is to take concern seriously. You have to be seriously or a strong mind in order to go forward. How far do you want to go or how deep do you want to dig it? All right. If, for, for instance, in this case, they concern the rules, they're concerned about the rules, they're concerned about the technology, they're concerned about the tactic and the strength of the, uh, the look of the sport, okay? So in order to move on, they study and then after take it seriously, they set the direction accordingly. That means they put concern and the percentage and the quality and quantity of their hard work into precision. Suppose, this is supposedly, I think, to put a percentage into how far they would like to go along with each um, topic or issues of concern. Okay, so application to Thai music transmission, I won't go any deeper for the Taekwondo, but to be applicable to Thai music transmission. And this is uh, with my heart, uh, deep feeling of respect. I would like to share something that also showing, paying the respect to the Thai traditional heritage, as well as trying to carry on our heritage into the future, which has new, uh, many uh, challenges and trends, not only the new generation, not only the new beliefs, rules, but also the technology and also the surrounding, okay? The surrounding helps us go further, okay? So to set the concern, we have to know where we are in terms of Thai music, where we are right now. I'm so proud that um, the era of Ratanakosin has been carried on for more than 237 years, not including before that era, meaning Ayutthaya Sukhothai. But we are still carrying on perhaps the same, the same thing without with minimum changing or application. It has been further for 700 years as well. However, next decades, where we want to be, where do we want to be? That's the problem, okay? Am I aware, are we aware of the current situation, which is very challenging? And where do we want to go? To be aware of that, I would like to uh, re refer to one of the theory, okay, from Professor Shippers. Okay, he had uh, pro proposed 12 continuum transmission framework or TCTF to be considered when doing the multicultural. I would like to apply this multicultural sense and concept into how to protect our heritage, not only Thai, but also all of 
all of the historical background of each country. Okay, in these twelve continuum, I would not say all of them, but I will pick only six of them to show you. Okay, to be order to be understanding or to concern where we are. Let's look at the teach issues of the context. Okay, the first one is static tradition to constant flux. It is inevitable that um, tradition music has to survive not only in the past but into the future and more likely the future contains more constant flux rather than static tradition. So this is what we need to aware. Another spectrum or another continuum is that Professor Shippers suggests that on your left hand side is reconstructed authenticity. So you have two spectrum to choose between reconstructed authenticity to dig it up and preserve it in, in a glass, in a bowl, in a gold cage or something reconstructed. Or otherwise you find new identity of authenticity authenticity in the new world, in the new normal. How would it be? How should it be? How can it be? Okay. In another spectrum is the original context and recontextualization. I have to be respect that some of the governmental office has to carry on their mission to do the original context. However, in terms of our music educator and education system, we can do both. We don't have to pick only to preserve the original context, but we can do some kind of arrangement into the spectrum to the recontextualization. How would it be shovable, uh, swallowable, or edible to our young generations to move on? Okay, so. You can see that in the, the, the picture down here, we see the world right here and we see Thailand in your left-hand side. We can choose to be alone, to be aware, but alone, or to be inside together, or to be among, to be alone or to be among. This is where each of us can think about it. You don't have to follow the uh, government uh, governmental direction. You can think and you can choose by your own because you are the musician and you are the new generation who will carry on. Okay. The, the other three that I like to talk about is the modes of transmission. Okay. This way we're going from the right hand side to the left hand side. Okay. From holistic to analytic to be able to understand and explain and describe it to authors. Somehow we need to move from holistic to analytic to be able to describe it, right? From oral mode to notation or to written mode. Okay, I show you that. It is, it is to be proud of that we have the written mode after we use the oral mode for uh, modeling while teaching music for a long, long time. However, we are using the notation, although we are not using the brand staff system like the Western notation, we are using this. We are using the, the block uh, and precisely count the notation according to time continuum. So that is something to be, be aware of and to be cherished upon, okay? The next one is, the transmission mode from intangible to tangible. Tangible means you can touch it, you can see it, you can feel it. Okay, to be um, to be documented. Ah, to be documented is really important. And right now, the current situation or the new normal even offer us to make things even more tangible. See, even this time or today, our conference is still recording what I am saying, <laughs> which is so scary. <laughs> I am trying to say something that is uh, correct because it is 
documented to be tangible enough for everyone else to be able to come back and listen to it, right? So set the the second thing I would like to share is to, after you're aware of where we are, you set the direction accordingly, okay? You set the, uh, like for Taekwondo, they, they set the rule, technology, and tactic. In terms of time you need, perhaps we can look at the similar terms or similar topics, like the rules that apply to where we are playing and where we are performing, or the setting that applies when we are sitting or positioning our traditional music, right? Long, long time, we not, a long, long time ago, we are um, suggested to sit down at the floor and lay down everything on the floor. Perhaps this is, um, this is changeable, okay? We can put things on table top. We can have the chairs to sit on so older generations can enjoy playing, sitting, and performing, right? In terms of technology, I don't have to say many things. We have, we can put it technology into our instruments, not only our uh, instruction, but also the instruments itself, okay? The tactic or how to perform the skills and uh, to, to play and to practice and to drill it, okay? We carry on our, uh, cultural uh, precision or precise drill um, exercises. Perhaps this can be uh, adapted into situation right now. Okay. Which set direction like the Taekwondo? They set direction precisely that they have to be in Olympic Games. Therefore, they have to trim down, trim down anything that it is um, too accessory. So the only, the only mission or the only gist, the only heart of the sport will can still be contained to this Olympic game. Okay. To set direction, you have to know where we want to be. You have to know how far we want to go. If you want Thai music, to be internationally acceptable and internationally uh, in music class, internationally in multicultural music chapters. Why not? Why not play it for fun? There is no um, governmental officers that will come to you and say, you cannot teach like this <laughs> or you cannot perform like this. When we do it, by our own turf, you can say, how and why do you, you do you do that? Okay, to be to be respect to them, to be respect to Arthur. Okay, and then what approach to follow? I would like to spend a few more minutes to uh, give you one of the approach that comes to mind when a uh, new situation or new normal or a current setting in 21st century. We are looking forward to innovation and to create innovation. One of the concepts is to use design thinking concept. There are five steps in design thinking when we are creating something new, but not only new for the sake of new, new for the sake of new and uh, solving the problems, okay? New only uh, to present the craftsmanship of new, of something that have, have never been done before is not the innovation. To make an innovation, you have to solve the problem too. So in terms of design thinking concept, the first process is to empathize, is to feel, feel the pain, to listen, not only listen to yourself, but listen to others, okay? Listen to who else that perceive our Thai music, who else that perceive Taekwondo as martial art. And what is their response? What, what do they want? And then we define, meaning we written down, define what are the problems? There should be a, a more likely be many problems, multiple problems rather than single problem. Okay, so when do you define? After you define all of the problems, 
you ideate, you answer to that problem by selecting the priority, prioritize all of those definition, all of those solution into uh, a precise, like Taekwondo, they use only three topics to ideate what should be go, should be going, all right? And then you create a prototype and then you test it, okay? It is fun to think about and talk about design thinking. I'd like to show you uh, the, the changes among challenges that Thai music, uh, Thai musician or Thai music educator were trying to do. One of the thing is to make a tuner, right? We have to be expert user and use what we have. The application right now can be built on top to make Thai tuner application. This is a good example. Some of the uh, pre-Soviet teacher, this is my student, they are trying to mix and match all of those application in order to make a, an innovation to, to solve the problem. This is a, a, a part of a tuner, but specifically designed for each instrument. So this is a good thing. All right. Last but not least, I'd like to show you uh, some of the traps that catches us some of the traps only um, uh, lead us to think that we are trying to solve the problem, but actually we are not, okay? If we are not fixing the problem, that's not, uh, that's gonna make us go in anywhere. And the other thing is uh, by not awareing of where we are, okay? Not awareing of where we are, we'll, consequence in our neglect. We will just play still and just ignore all of the problems. So we have to be aware of. Okay, one of the example when we are not uh, fixing the problem, we say the Thai xylophone, we call Ranat it right now. We are trying to make new things, new Ranat, new Thai xylophone. But we are not fixing any problem. We just make it to be like, uh, a craftsmanship a creation, a new creation that is beautiful. I I would like to applaud, give a big hand to the creator of uh, Renat Gale or Renat that made from uh, glasses or, or, or plastic or a, a special form of plastic. This is good too. This is good in terms of uh, artwork, craftsmanship. However, we can do something that is solving the problem also. This our folk musician, also we can call guru. Kruat is a, a profound a folk musician who not only transmit their uh, music artwork, but also creating the instrument. And the instrument that he created right now has been facing more toward modern um, fiddle guitar and to be approachable to people around the world, okay, in terms of size, in terms of precision, or in technology. All right, to be aware of the problem, I would like to uh, let you look at the drums. In, in There are two drums. One is the kettle drum called timpani. One is the Malayu drums in Thai. We protect and we keep it and we, we carry on it for many hundred years, okay? Even longer than the timpani maybe. However, look at the timpani, the way they tune the sound, they can just turn on the knob, right? And the tuning is, is, is okay, it's is perfect by the musician. Whereas in Malayu drum that we carry on for more than seven, um, six, or uh, hundred years, many hundred years. In terms of how to how we tune the Malayu drum, we have to go to the the creator in order to uh, to pull the strings beside it. This is this is good in terms of precision and in terms of Thai tuning. Our King Rama and I even put the theoretical tuning of Thai system according to each specific area. So it is good to be that listed. However, how do we move on, carry on from what King Rama and I had been rooted as grounded for us? Okay. 
look at the fiddle, look at the fiddle, look at the violin. The violin has been moved to many innovative style production. And we have Thai fiddle who, who is um, playing along uh, in this uh, concert hall as well. What is the next area or next era for Thai fiddle? I think it's time for us to think about not to be too scared of, but also to build upon what we, we already have. We don't have, think, we don't have to think so much if we look at what others have been done. And that's one of the concept of design thinking is to build upon what we already have. Okay, to, um, to make conclusion, I would like to put four concerns that has in my, have in my mind. And then the direction has been given in underneath here. First one is the mode of transmission from oral to written, from on-site to online. Second is the music instrument itself from tradition to creation like the Renat or xylophone that has been created beautifully. However, can we create more into innovation to solve the problem like the off xylophone, okay? Solve the problem of tuning, solve the problem of taking the pitch in and off and falling apart, right? That's the innovation. The third topic is the repertoire to be extended export or to be arrangement precisely enough for learning enough for entertainment. Okay, function of the music from sacred music to secular music. And so we can see that we have something to build upon. Okay, in terms of notation, we don't have to go very far to the grand staff. In terms of performance or instrument, we have been developed the instrument of Thai dulcimer from the lid that has been separated apart from, from, to the lid that has been covered and going together. Uh, from the position of poster standpoint, uh, we can now sit at the chair, okay? Sit on the chair instead of sit on the floor. Therefore, many people can use and enjoy it. So that is my last slide, which is I'd like to encourage you to care to listen to your surrounding so that you know and you will be aware of where we are and where we want to be. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Dania. <laughs> such a, a, a topic that, that I personally feel um, revitalizing, you know, that um, that 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 we we whenever we talk about the things about the heritage or how are we going to recontextualize them, you know, you know usually in oh these kind of topics can easily stir up the heated debate um, Ooh, yeah. among scholars, right? Um, right. And, and I, I you know I appreciate that you also present to us the twelve um, continuums that that I think it's it's a uh, they are phrased in in using good terms, using, using a, a, a very appropriate terms to explain the, the, um, the difficult concept um, in, 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 just, in just one word, right? So, so that's, that's very good. Um, so um, any question from our attendees? Um, we are very welcome. Yeah. And you know, to, you know, to put our audience in, in the context a little bit is that, you know, nowadays, you know, Thai traditional music is something that our modern society has, you know, retreated farther away from, from it already. And, and I think, I think we, we all want to try to, um, you know, to, to make sure that everyone still, still knows and owns the heritage and, and, and is willing to take the heritage a bit, a bit more um, into the future, right? To 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 make it better in the future. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Professor Anotai asked, could you share with us the idea of empathy? This is a Thai concept of, of empathy. Okay, the empathize and empathy, which uh, uh, Dr. Kenna was talking about yesterday, was also tied up to mine as well. I was so happy to say that, to hear that too. Uh, the empathize and empathy 
is a very good thing right now. They come back to like from Western that they approach by a research center or teacher center. Right now we are still more like a student center and more empathize, more empathy to be in Thai terms we use uh, in Buddhist, we use metta and metta right now in the, uh, the, the, the research literature, we are using M-E-T-T-A right now. So metta and empathy are more like listening to others, not just listening to ourselves, but listening to others and care for it. By listening, you not only use your ear, but you are using your mind as well. At the same time, you're not just listening. So we move from hearing to pass through your ears, to listening, pass through your ear to your mind and to your heart. I think that's my precise answer to Ajahn Anodai with empathy. <laughs> okay, so I think so um, it's about time. So. Let me thank you again, Dr. Dania, for, for presenting to us. The, you know, the, I feel You're very welcome. refreshing right now um, to talk about this. So let me um, move on to the um, next um, presentation. So, uh, you know, we have a quick break. Uh, we have a quick oh, okay, break. Sure. Oh, yes. Um, ah, okay, at 11. Yes, uh, we have a quick break. So please also uh, kind of like come and join. Uh, I'll join you. Thank you very, very much, um, all of three presenters this morning. And it's really wonderful to hear such like, like diverse way of how you can look at music, how music was kind of revived. Uh, rituals has been transferred into kind of nowadays medium that we can catch. And thank you very much, Roger. And Dr. Nami, I've just sent um, the message to her that she's now <laughs> officially on, on wanted list now. So wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for joining the list as well. Thank you. And it's really, really wonderful. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Tanam Hun, for navigating. I know that you have a lot of things to say about the uh, Prometheus and everything. So I'm sure we're going to hear more uh, when you moderate the next session with us. So now we're going to have a half an hour break. And I would love to kind of like invite you to go and explore our virtual world in Topia. We will be sending you a link within a second. So just grab your coffee and then um, come back and start walking in the virtual world you can just leave your camera on or your voice on you can still meet people in there and and i'll see you all uh, kind of back together with uh, dr tanapon again at 11 11 o'clock so just kind of stay in the room you will see a loop of things and then just click on it uh, on a chat box and then you will see the topia out uh, the virtual versions of um, pgbis that our alumni has kindly created for us thank you okay see you in a second then Okay, see you at 11. Thank you.
Okay, so I think we are one minute to the next session. So um, if you're here already, I think we are we are getting ready. Okay, so I think uh, we can come back to the second half of um, this morning um, panel session. So, you know, I kind of like the, the way that the program today is curated because it's like we are, uh, we have been moving from, you know, the, the topics related to something very, very um, local, um, ancient, um, you know, ritualistic activities, you know, and now, uh, you know, and we, as, as the panel progressed, we have moved to the fuse, uh, fusing fusion combination of the some traditional ideas like traditional arts um, to a modern um, kind of thinking, a, a mo modern lifestyle or modern methods and techniques. And um, in the previous um, presentation, we already talked about the metaphor of you know of transmission of traditional music, you know, I'm comparing that to the traditional Korean martial arts, um, which was um, Taekwondo. And so in this uh, presentation, now we um, are still um, in the topics related to martial arts-ish, uh, which is the, now we move to the uh, Japanese school martial arts, Daito Ryu. And I believe we are comparing, comparing and related, relating um, the martial arts to the teaching of, you know, using the body and the physical aspect um, in, in, in teaching and performing music. So let me um, welcome the presenter, uh, Professor Pantuit Aswade Metakun. Hello, everyone. Um, um, do I start my presenta presentation now? Uh, yeah, please. Um, okay, I'll start by sharing my my slide. Can you all see it? Yes, clearly. And if, if you can share the sounds as well, um, just in case if you have any examples, can you reshare the slide and click share sounds on the left hand bottom corner? Thank you. Ka. Share sound. <laughs> No, I I don't have any sounds in in, uh, in okay. my presentation. Okay, okay, okay sure. Uh, <laughs> your sounds is nice enough. Thank you. Okay. Um. Uh. Thank you for for introducing me. Um. I'll talk about my paper presentation on the in the topic of applying Daito Ryu body to body teaching into music. From my experience as a teacher in, in PG Vim, um, I have encountered a lot of students that think they uh, understand perfectly of how things and system works in, in theory. I ask them to explain to me uh, only to find that they have interpreted the text they have read in the wrong direction. And I often heard them as other teacher or even myself to play for them and they would play or sing back to me and as if they were correct. Some are good, some are not, but the thing is that they only imitate the sounds without much understanding of mechanical movement inside. And if they de decide to do so, it, it can lead them to an injuries after a long hour of practice or in artificially arranged mechanical music playing. For example, uh, the word to relax when I ask my student to stand in a relaxed position, some of them will loosen the body completely. Some of them are slouching, some tilt their back sideways, some tilt their head forward, 
and some collapsed the body, the whole body completely. And some of them relax only in particular parts, such as um, shoulders, neck, torso, or back, without knowing that our body is interconnected throughout the body. And to relax one part of the body, the tension will fall into other parts. And that's when I realized that only with body-to-body -body teaching will give them example of, of how I feel, what I feel. And um, then we can come up with uh, agreed upon terms to communicate to each other. Body-to-body -body teaching can help students explore their body sensation that sometimes they don't even know exist. For the students to feel the sensation with their own body combined with their theory understanding before would make them come up with their own understanding by heart. And I'll call that intuition. From my experience, I came across many methods that talking about body-to-body -body teaching and martial arts. And in my opinion, is that the, the best body-to-body -body teaching method is in Daitoru, which believes in training both external and internal that can only be learned through touch. The touch I'm talking about is, I'm talking about is that uh, Touch comes with many sensations, such as energy and connections, and all of the sensation is called Aiki. There are many aspects of Aiki which include energy, spiritual, philosophy, and technique, and each can run out into its own category. But here I'll discuss mainly on the art of Aiki or the science of joining the spirit, Aiki no Jutsu and intermysteries, hidden oki, that emphasize on the use and the application of the body to create connections and relaxation as energy. To use that tutorial method as a tool for students to realize how our body, mind, and energy can be unified and work as one. Um, this is something I, I heard something thinking. No? Should I continue? <laughs> yeah, okay. Please continue. Uh, the, the teachings must be realized from the exterior of the body into internal organs within. And the teachings divide into four stages. So the first one is Haru, is the stage. Um, where you sense the awareness of your neutral boundaries in body-wise, energy-wise, and mind-wise to heighten the sensitivity of oneself and to create a balance of complementary within and without oneself. The second one is irimi, which is the stage of introductory to the connection between two objects, both inward and outward, to create the entering touch and to create the point of contact. The third one is awaze, is a stage of harmonizing by expanding, absorbing, and stretching the point of connection along the structure of given objects to strengthen the connection to the maximum. And the last, tenkan, is a stage of conversion where you sense and initiate the change and adapt along to maintain the connections. And in a moment, I will demonstrate a basic dietary exercise called Aikiake. This exercise alone will go through all the stages that I just mentioned. First, um, starting by heightening your sensation along the body at this same stage, you may feel like spreading out or unfolded your exterior body, like the common understanding of how to wish means to bloom like a flower and you have to hold on to that feeling 
for this blooming sensation will help you sense your natural balance between strength and relaxation. In the second stage, my partner will grab me and my wrist in my wrist area, which I will make an entering touch to create contact point at that particular area and connect his arm with me. This stage, some may feel like both of your body and, and the partner are interconnected. Uh, in the third stage, I will tighten the connection I made by adjusting my wrist or the ankle of my arms, my elbows, and stretches the connection point to his shoulder for me to lift my partner off the ground in the fourth stage. In this third stage, some may feel like um, the sensation of harmonizing along the structure of, of partner's body. And in the fourth stage, after I initiated a lift movement, I'm also sensing my partner movement to keep all the connection I made intact so that I keep control over my partner's body until I let go of all the connections. Um, now, um, can everyone see me? Yes. Yes, okay, I will demonstrate now. I have invited my, my friend to, to help me with this. So thank you so much, Sensei. Thanks. Uh, can you see me clearly at this this yeah. okay. it's fine. The first thing is that I put out my, my wrist like this in a relaxed and uh blue, with blooming sensation that, that I talk about. As you can see, my hand isn't tight at all and really soft, but full with energy. And now my, my partner will grab me in, in the in the wrist, second stage. And I adjust, I lift him and keep the connection intact before I let go. Let's see it again. So it's one, nice and relaxed, full of energy. Second one, connection. Third one, Now, as how to apply those sensation into music. My student and I have done an experiment to find out that each stage can be applied to solve or elevate some of the difficulties they face in practicing or performing music. By applying that blooming sensation of the first stage into different part of body, students can use it to the benefit of um, fixing the, the difficulty of a problem, an open thought problem, for example, for singers, for brass players and woodwind players, a problem of a lock joints or fixated structure for strings player and pianist, and problem that occur with tension in playing position, standing position and sitting position. The students are said to have a lighter sensation while the strength produce a stronger and a more flexible and said to have sensed the state of relaxation as energy. The second and the third is always come together because um, when you made a point of contact, you need to strengthen and stretch the, the point of contact to, to make them more approachable. So by applying that interconnection sensation and harmonizing sensation of the second and third stage into the different parts of organs and body parts that touch the instrument, students are said to have much more connected movement along the separated body parts in one whole movement with lightness um, and 
it will give them a final control. And as you can see, this method also works inside our body for breathe involved musicians and singers to connect the movement of inner organs such as pelvic floor muscles to the abdominal muscles, to the intercostal muscle, to the rib cages, to diaphragm and to the chest muscles to work in unity with ease. For the third one, students often overlook the factor that um, we are in constant changing world and our body is always changing. For that, the body, the, con the connection of our body to the instrument is always changed. The connection that are made are loosened or lost for the disregarding of changes that happen during the change of notes or sometimes even a, that one particular tone. And by sensing and be more aware of the natural dynamic movement that happen within ourselves, and, and the instruments, students are able to keep constant connection of their own body parts and the instruments during the performance. And the essence of, of this method is that for the practitioner to be liberated from thinking process during the performance, but rather to feel and to sense and forge our instincts in the practice session and let the flow of the body movement sensation and artistic ideas occur simultaneously to create music. Thank you. Okay, I think it's a, such a nice presentation to, um, to learn about you know, uh, one more method to help us teaching, you know, because um, I think for the one of the very um, challenging um, things in the teaching of music is that because the, the, the act of using our body to produce sound or to play music is that we, we cannot really make the student understand what we feel like, like we, we know, we, we know this kind of feelings, yes. but yes. they cannot know how we feel it, right? And, and yes. also cannot know if they feel it as yes. we feel it too, right? Yes. Yeah, and and, and I, I think the, um, there are several methods exist in the world you know that that was adopted that were adopted from the non um, music field for example Alexandra technique and Laban technique you know that, yeah. that to, to ex explain the, the the force and the concept and the gravity and and so on and into into in, into technical terms and and, and concepts um, yeah but but I, I really find that this 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 martial arts kind of teaching really, really connect you to the to the partner, right? To the partner, and you can physically feel feel the force from from the other person. So I think it, it, it can yes. be very helpful. Um, is there any questions um, from our attendees that would like to ask our presenter? Hi. Yes, I have a question. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Um, can I ask, how do you, first of all, wow, very fascinating. Uh, second of all, uh, I'd like to ask, how do you um, recommend what uh, sort of stages of the Aiki are suited for which kinds of problems? Um, um, and can you, I, I don't quite, um, the connection uh, are quite bad. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Um, I wanted to ask, um, how you decide which stages of Aiki are suited to which kinds of problems? Okay, um, I actually I don't decide. I, I do an experiment with with my students, a group of of a study group, uh, with having around 15, 15 students, and I teach them all of the the exercise that I do in that room and let them explore and practice with each stage into the musical playing. And they um, kind of replied back and write back to me that um, this stage helped them in this way and this that helped them in that way. So I come up with, with this presentation with, with my students. Thank you. 
Uh, let me ask Professor Pantwit, are you yourself the the the, the uh, practitioner of the Daito view martial art? Yes, yes, yes. I, I I practice it quite quite some time now. I also practice um, kendo and and other martial arts too. Very cool. Very. Cool. <laughs> Is there any other question? Can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when when you uh when you introduce this uh wonderful ideas of martial art into music, uh do do you find any differences between ladies and gentlemen on how they perceive and take it in? Let me think. Mm -hmm. Um for 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 the, the male students, they they tend to use more of their muscles in in the beginning of of the learning progress which is not the ideal for for both music and and in dietary we want you to use and feel that sensation and energy to 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 make use of your body in a not tense way but for women um they tend not not to to to, to stiffen their muscles and they progress more quickly in in this natural sense method wow thank you this is <laughs> a very good background finding on how to process on because i am interested in too oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> so is this also a kind of mental practice? There's a mental aspect to it also, yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, in in, in Dajiru, um the founder of, of Dajiru is um, uh, Takeda Sokaku. He explained the key idea is that you you win before your, your enemy approaches. So you, you already win mentally and energy-wise, you prepared to to to, uh, to to take him down and but but for, for for music is that when you perform you already prepared your mental your mentality and and you go on stage and be prepared that you are going to 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 perform just fine i think it's the same thing but we we just adapt it into music playing you know, it's such a good reminder that that you know the mental practice has been missing in a lot of of music, the teaching and practice, right? That that sometimes yes. you are so focused on on the physical side of, of 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 things, and and this is very good, I think, um, because um, it really embedded the mental practice already into into the the method, so so yes. integral into the method. So 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 yeah, it's very very interesting. Um, if there are any other question for our presenter, I think this is a very good topic that we can explore many things out of it. Actually, I would like to, to share a bit more of the information um, on, on the Daichiru method. Um, is that uh, it's not only four stages that, that helps the student when, when you practice Daitoru or Japanese martial arts, the, the idea of uh, Hara position is coming to play, or Dantian, or Dantian is the, the sensation around your abdominal area or the stomach area. And you focus on, on that particular area for, for the force energy or, or the, for the pressure rather than the your arms and your torso um, for that you you will use the muscles of lower back as is said to be the most important muscles in our daily life and and to create music and acting and sports so that is also the main point of doing all of the stages too, to be relaxed and use that muscles instinctly, intuitively, not by forcing it.
Yeah, so it's, so it's always create the the body awareness, right? The awareness of 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 the muscles and and parts of your body, um, to you know it, and incorporate incorporate it into the, the performing or singing. Yes, um, which, which is very good. Um, does the Daito Ryu method, um, emphasize things about the breathing? That does does it something that integrated in 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 the method? Yes, yes. Um. In, in uh, one aspect of IT, um, we have the term called CoQ, um, which, which literally means breathing. Um, for, for the practitioner to, to sense the force out of the body or to receive the, the force, uh, one must use the, the breathe technique to, to sense out the, the force and to receive it. But it's somehow complicated to to explain it here. But um, if if you if we are lucky enough to to um, to meet each other in, in after COVID, maybe we can do a demonstration in in a real sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because breathing is such an important um, aspect, you know, especially for singer and wind players, right? That that. Yes. Uh, you know, so, sometimes we, we breathe, um, we, we practice breathing, but we're not really mindful about it. Um, so I, I believe that, you know, especially in the, in the martial arts in that day, especially if okay. they put so much emphasis um, on, on the breathing and you're really aware of how, how you breathe. Right? I, I, I can um, demonstrate a bit for you that um, when I exhale with, with a good method of, of, of breathing technique, the, the result will will be somehow like this. May may I introduce my friend again? No, I think. Uh, okay. That 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 that's how you you control your your breathing technique and and send it out as as a force to to other person and imagine how the, how that will affect in in the the in musical playing such as singing how powerful that pressure would would be and for the strings player for for the all the musicians actually yeah so so probably maybe i i um i want to ask you as you are a counter tenor singer yourself which which forgive yes. my ignorance if if i do not know any te technical stuff that related to the counter tenor singing. But is there um, anything that you know, as a counter tenor singer, that is more, you know, more special, more unique in, in the, the way you produce the sound and how Daito Ryu method assists you in in anything? Um, I will separate the, the the question into two parts. Is that um, Counter tenor is is not really a, a special type of voice or anything, for my opinion. It's just another type of, of voice or range. Um, and Daito Ryu um, doesn't really help me understand more of, of a counter tenor voice, but rather uh, help me understand more of the technical singing as a whole. And uh, yeah, um, if, if you familiar with my singing is that um, some of the critique have have uh, right in, in, in the paper that um, I have quite an heroic voice for, for counter tenor, which is rare. I think because partly because I, I, I do this kind of training myself and others just do the traditional light singing of counter tenor that's what my guess is <laughs> yeah, yeah so 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 maybe maybe that that the, the fact that you are so so you know, aware of aware of, of of several technique that and you know and the the, the kind of of special uh training of breathing that may probably that make 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 your voice so heroic as they say yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, a, a lot of fans in the chat box for Mr. Pantuit here. Thank you, thank you.
Okay, so um, if there is no other question, so I'd like to, um, oh, actually, yes, Ajahn Anotai. Oh, okay. Um, um, she asked if, um, do I think there's a technique already available in the past in classical technique? Oh, um, I think so. I, I think so. Um, there are many theses, uh, singing theses and, and instrument theses that talk about this technique that are really similar, but um, they talking in a really technical terms of, of adjusting organs, turning the diaphragm inward, outward, create, creating the pressure inside the lungs, in, in the pressure, in the chest cavity, in some sort of that sense. But for, as I said before in, in the presentation is that there are barrier when, when you interpret the, the text and the thesis is, much more convenient for you to feel the, the, the pressure yourself and be aware that it's not force of stiffing your muscles. It's happened by relaxing, relaxation and there come energy. Yeah, thank you. Any other more question? Uh, no, there's no question, but I was uh, I was directed by Anatai to say something um, <laughs> because I'm also a singer. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, as we will hear later from both of us, we'll talk a bit about movement and singing as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I absolutely agree when, when you were talking about classical technique, like on Dr. Anatai's question, it's usually about the sound that you're trying to achieve. So they just ask you to make this kind of sound. Yes. or it's like anatomy, you got to do this thing. Or sometimes it's imagery, like like words like floating, something yes. like that. But you know, you know, things like that, that is yes. a bit vague, but something that you can experience. I think this is really, really interesting. Yeah, okay, so thank you very much, um, everyone. So it's about time, so I would like to move to the next presentation. So thank you very much, Professor Pantukovic for your um, very intriguing um, presentation. So um, in the uh, next um, presentation, so we have um, now uh, more of a fusing and, and combining the, uh, the traditional arts, um, you know, across cultures. So we have our topics here. Let me read devotions, choreographing, Western operatic repertoire with Indian dance vocabulary. And we have our presenter, uh, Wong yong -en and Leia um, Devadesan, if I'm pronouncing correctly. So I would like to hand over um, this presentation to you. Thank you very much. Here it is. And sorry, I'm, I need to share the sound as well. Give me a second. Okay, here we go. So yes, hello everyone, um, and thank you for coming to this talk. Uh, my name is Yong An. I'm the performer for a concert or a, a performance that we're calling Devotions, a project to choreograph Western operatic repertoire with classical Indian dance vocabulary. Um, joining me today is Leah Devadasan, who is my friend and frequent collaborator. Um, and she did uh, a lot of the research and dramaturgy for this. We're part of a team of four people, which includes our choreographer, Caroline Chin, and our pianist, Amanda Lee, who you can see in the background of this picture, but they're not here today. In our presentation, we hope to share some of our motivations, theoretical foundations and artistic processes in workshopping the show, which is scheduled for late September in Singapore. Uh, before we get into that, I hope it will be helpful for you all to know a little bit about us. Um, and I think I will get Leia to start us off with this. Hello. 
Um, it's really nice to be here and I, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to share a bit more about our process. I hope that you can hear me fine and the internet doesn't cut out. Um, but if so, please let me know. So yes, as Yongan mentioned, and you can, as you can see, there's an ancient picture of us there where we from when we met in high school and in the secondary school, um, both of us had come from musical, I think, backgrounds, but we studied formally um, for me, piano, and for Yong-An, singing in SOTA, the School of the Arts Singapore. Um, yes, and there I was doing piano and then composition and getting interested in interdisciplinary art as well as, as, well as the academic study of music. So that's led me to pursue music as an undergraduate degree from which I've just graduated. And now I'm on the way to doing a musicology graduate degree at the University of Oxford. And um, in the break between, between school and university was when both of us signed up to Chalk Studios, where we both learned Odyssey, and we've been doing it since 2018. So we consider this two really beloved art forms, the Western classical music tradition, as well as Indian classical dance. And today what we're going to show is a synthesis of some parts of those two traditions, which we thought to bring together in this project. Absolutely. Yes, that's a very perfect telling of our stories, I suppose. Um, and yes, uh, I have been doing Odyssey with, with Leia for something like three years. Um, before that, I did ballet from when I was like five years old to like 18. Um, and yes, uh, I'm also currently studying music. I'm in my final year at the Yong Sito Conservatory. So, um, and because I think because of so much, so many years of dance, I actually did dance longer than music. I generally prefer to be moving around when I'm singing rather than standing still. All right, uh, and here's the a little story behind how the project was hatched. So uh, when I was in Odyssey classes, uh, I was learning this piece called Lalita Lavanga, which is a devotional Odyssey piece with text from a 12th century poet Jayadeva's uh, Gita Govinda, which depicts the love between Krishna and Radha. And at the same time in school, I was studying this aria called Vadoro Pupile, might be familiar for some of you. It's a Handel aria uh, love song sung by Cleopatra for Julius Caesar, who she's trying to seduce. Um, and in these two, I saw very similar images of like Cupid's arrows, romantic longing. And I felt that there are lots of um, overlapping sentiments, I think, between some of these opera pieces and Odyssey pieces. And I wondered if there was a way to combine the two and that they could reinforce each other's um, dramatic capabilities. Oopsie daisies. Yes, so this is the final program that we've come up with and it'll be performed at the Esplanade Concourse in Singapore. Uh, the first half is two pieces by uh, Johann Sebastian Bach from the John Passion, which were picked because of their um, revolving around devotional religious love. And then pieces from Julius Caesar, which revolve around a devotional romantic kind of love, a praise of romantic love. Um, and this is sort of like a synthesis of uh, the kind of love between Krishna and Radha. Leia will talk about this later. Yeah, and as you will notice, by the way, that these pieces are all from the Baroque era, and there is a reason for that. Uh, and for all of these things, I'll pass it on to Leia now. Yeah, so before embarking on this project, of course, when we were thinking about whether or not to integrate these two traditions and how, um, uh, we needed to see really on what grounds it was appropriate to, to integrate certain repertoire or certain practices. And so one obvious similarity between Odyssey as an art form and the kinds of repertoire that it usually um, involves, as well as the religious oratorial music that we were hoping to use, is the theme of devotional love. Um, this is featured very strongly in Odyssey's main song cycle or poetic cycle, which is dance to. This is known as Gita Govinda, as Yongan has mentioned. So this is a cycle of poems that depict the mutual longing of Radha and Krishna, two Hindu myth mythical characters and eventually um, trace their coming together and falling in love and consummating that love. So in this text, the, there's, a, there's a stanza that says, if remembering Hari or Krishna enriches your heart, if his arts of seduction arouse you, listen to Jayadeva's speech in these sweet, soft lyrical songs. So this is a quite a unique mode of devotion that is positioned as a metaphor for romantic love, or rather romantic love is positioned as a metaphor for that love and that longing between the devotee and the divine. That's the kind of devotional love that operates in most of Gita Govinda and also 
um, Odyssey repertoire as a whole, where when you see two lovers, you can kind of interpret the relationship as one of the desired relationship between a devotee and a divine. Meanwhile, in Bach's uh, John's Passion, we've reproduced a few excerpts from the lyrics of the songs that we're going to use. And this relationship is thought of more as a disciple and um, devo uh, yeah, this, this a relationship of discipleship and of brotherly love. So here in Ishfal, Gadir Gleich Falls, the God and the deity is positioned as the life and the light. And in the more solemn reflective pieces like Evega and Sefliza, mein Herze, the narrator is compelling spectators to behold the suffering and the passion of Jesus Christ and to also feel his feelings as, as their own. Yes. So evidently we see two different kinds of devotional love at work. The first being um, Sringara Rasa and Bhakti. We'll explain a bit more about these later, but basically, as I've said, it's about the romantic relationship standing for the worshipper and divine relationship. Meanwhile, in the Bach's Passions and in kind of the Christian Catholic tradition more generally, we see agape, unconditional, sympathetic and intense, but non-erotic love. Okay. Um, sorry for, for interrupting, but I think I should provide some footnote for um, the Thai audience here a little bit because the Indian dance has something that overlapped um, with, with the some kind of Thai understanding of the technical term. So if you don't mind, um, mm. one slide so I can translate. Um, that for Thai audience. Yeah, um, of course, of course. That that in this um, this is the um, Indian. If I correct me if, if I'm wrong, but it's it's the um, Indian um, poet, right? Um, uh, in in Thai, we can pronounce it Kita uh, Kovinta by by a poet Chayathev, and this is a story about the um, Pratisana and 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 Pramerata, and Pramerata is um, one of the ver version of of Pralakshmi. And, and, and these are the character that a lot of Thai people um, know already from from the, the the Thai version of Ramayana. So they they understand it, the, mm. but um, but because of the 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 the, the spelling in, in the transcription, so maybe they they don't know what what what, what they are. Okay, so um, if you don't mind, probably I, I I might add some footnote for our Thai audience so they understand more, or they can connect more. Okay, sure, please go on. That was great. Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank. You. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, let's move on to the next slide, please. Yep. So maybe some of this might also be familiar. And, and please let us know later in the Q&A how much of this um, it, it intersects with maybe Thai kinds of aesthetic theories. But we found that in Indian aesthetic theories, another thing that we wanted to compare, of course, when we were doing the research was how art and how stylized expression is conceptualized in these two traditions. So that when we brought them together, we didn't compromise either, but rather we we, we thought of them in their full context. So in terms of Indian aesthetics, we have the dominant concept of rasa, which is taken from the Natya Sastra written around this time that you see. Um, so rasa means flavor that's generated by the aesthetic experiences, but simultaneously it also means to taste this flavor. So it's both a noun and a verb. And it's related to bhava, which is the dominant effect or the mood of a piece, which can be created by the song, the rag, um, the narrative, the lyrics, and the dance, and the representation. So the relationship of bhava and rasa, and also the more physical movements that generate these transcendental aspects is summarized here in the Natya Shastra, and it's translated as, where the eyes go, the hands follow, where the hands go, the mind follows, where the mind goes, there is bhava, and where there is bhava, there is rasa. So clearly we have a movement from the physical gestures that the dancer produces, into the intellectual aspects and into then the emotional aspect that's generated in performer and audience interaction. And then in European aesthetics, um, we, we take this concept from the time period in which most of our, all of our repertoire is chosen actually, which is normally thought of as the Baroque period or the early modern period in Western music history. And a dominant concept circulating amongst intellectuals and artists was effect and layer where music was thought of as being capable of arousing emotions because artistic and emotional features were similar or they had that innate similarity. An example of this is, as you can see, um, a quote by the aesthetician Matheson saying that since joy is an expansion of our soul, thus it follows that I could best express this by large and expanded intervals. And conversely, uh, many composers thought to express 
sorrow and lament through dissonance, through small intervals, chromaticism. So we have that level of correspondence. So evidently in both the kinds of correspondences that are at work, and we wanted to see how we can best leverage of these two theories. So now you see a little bit of how the theories work in practice. We've seen a bit about how they were thought of, but um, let's see in terms of representation, how these things manifest. So in Indian aesthetics, we have to deal with the common practice of representational abhinaya, which is a kind of practice of miming, as some people might call. Um, and you can see from the picture that a dancer would mime playing the veena in this way. And this is how it actually looks like to play the veena, um, which is quite a straightforward representation, but also a bit stylized. And in the next slide, you'll find um, this video, uh, stills from this video of uh, ODC guru Kilisharan Mohapatra playing these two characters of Radha and Krishna, which I hope might be familiar as different incarnations um, to you. So in the first video, he is playing Radha, fantasizing and waiting for Krishna. And in the second, he's playing Krishna coming in, um, coming through the forest to find Radha. And this is another aspect of Indian aesthetics, which is quite unique, which is that a single character, a single actor um, plays multiple characters and switches very quickly in and out of them and also portrays nature and the narrative and the text. So there's a lot of things going on um, and it's very rich what a single performer has to do. And when we go to European aesthetics, the way that rhetoric, as mentioned, manifests is often through um, how, yes, how, how it was, as I said, the musical features correspond with the emotions that are in the text or that the composer hopes to portray. So we just wanted to show a really short clip here of one of the pieces that we've chosen. And I want you to listen out for how in the introduction, all the instruments play, not all, sorry, but basically um, the, the bass instruments and the bass of continuo plays a lament bass. So that's a descending set of four notes in the musical accompaniment, which by this time through Monteverdi and through early opera had acquired the the connotation of mourning and weeping and lament. So it's often called the lament base. And then later on in the song, um, the whole song is really evocative of crying and tears through a falling melodic contour. But this particular passage in which the singer says, your Jesus is dead, 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 um, really has the, has the connotation of crying in the way that the voice is used. So let's listen to those two and maybe you'd see a bit more about how this works in practice. Thank you. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed those very short clips. You should listen to the whole song because it is awesome. Um, but evidently, the point of, of going through these, of really like breezing through these two systems and the important aspects that we found is that to show that these are really highly developed systems of artistic expression with their own existing symbols, their methods for making meaning, etc. So we, in doing this project, we firmly believe that our project can't compromise either tradition but must speak to the intersections or the complementary aspects of both in, in holistic ways from theory to practice. And thus it has to do justice to both. And that's what we hope to hope to do. Yeah, I'll pass it on to Yonga now to talk more about our actual process of working on this. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so now uh, I'd like to talk about actually being in the dance studio and working on this. I must note that the whole time uh, Leia was in the UK, so we did not have her physically with us um, and we had to navigate that. But anyway, um, every piece before we would go in, we had sort of two layers of analysis and the first was text and the second is music. Um, so that we could relate them to each other. And for text, we would look at any dominant imagery 
moods and emotional states, as well as recurring themes and characters. So as you'll see, dominant imagery is in green. There's uh, the word pupille, which is eyes, and that word is repeated very frequently. And they are referred to as arrows or sparks, which is saete, I'll, I'll use my cursor, saete and faville respectively. Um, so, so these three are very related. And then um, references to the heart. So sen is chest, kore is heart. So those are very frequently appearing um, images. In terms of moods and emotional states, um, as you may know, most handle RS are dakapo. So there's A, B, A. And in the A section, the predominant mood is love. So vadoro, amore, uh, which both mean love. And then the B section is a little bit more melancholic. So we have words like pietose, which is pity, and mesto, which is melancholy. Um, so all of these, uh, yes, are in orange. And then for recurring characters, because this is a seduction song addressed to one person, the only recurring character is Cesare himself. And that's in all the you pronouns. So v adoro, vostre, vi chiama, vi bram, uh, these things. Those are references to Cesare and they're highlighted in red. After doing this, we would go into a musical analysis. So we look at uh, form and convention. So like I mentioned, da capo arias um, and different structures in the Bach pieces and places where music reflects the text. So um, the rhetoric that Lea had described using Zeflisa. In the case of Vadoro Popile, we have, um, for example, uh, different iterations of the word for heart, sen. So as you can see, uh, and if you can't read this, no problem, you will hear it later. Um, but it's a, uh, it sort of gets more and more complex, the words for sen and the musical decoration that is used, bigger gestures and more rhythmic complexity and variety. Um, so the way that that word changes. And then uh, in the B section, we have a very obvious shift in mood. So um, the A section is more expansive and the B section is a little more melancholic. We move from F major to D minor, which uh, if I'm not mistaken, in the doctrine of affections, D minor is supposed to represent melancholy and anxiety. Um, we don't know that Handel was intentionally going for that with the key choice, but it's interesting to note. Um, and yes, the intervals, especially in the bass are a lot smaller. So that corresponds with the quote that Leia read earlier, that smaller intervals are a little more anxious. So having covered all of these uh, moods and rhetorics, uh, we could move into the studio. So every session, this was the process, and every song took two to three sessions of about an hour and a half each to choreograph. And this would begin with a listening and sharing analysis. So uh, I would listen through the whole piece with Caroline. We're lucky that Caroline is like a alternate universe version of me and Leia in that she's a dancer, but she listens to Western classical music, she plays the violin, and it was very easy to explain these uh, ideas, exchange these ideas with her. Um, so we would listen to them, and then based on the analysis, we would come up with some stances uh, and gestures to anchor the choreography. Um, and here are some examples from Vadero Pupile. We will show you the full choreography in a minute. Um, but the first stance we came up with was what we called the Cleopatra stance. So this is feet together with one heel raised and a slight bend in the body. Uh, this is called Ankunchita, and then the fists um, resting on your hips. So we felt that um, it was very useful. Every piece has like at least one default stance because it's quite common in a lot of these Indian myths to have a stance that represents a certain character. And this is what we came up with for Cleopatra. Uh, she stands like this in the other song that we do as well, so it's consistent throughout the show. Uh, then there's the Cupid's arrow gesture, which is used in the Lalita Lavanga Odyssey piece, which corresponds to the eyes being referred to as arrows and sparks. Besides dances, we also have uh, specific hand gestures, and these are called mudras, and many of them in traditional Odyssey vocabulary have specific significances. So, for example, we have Kateri Mukha, which is also called scissors, um, and it's commonly used to show eyes. Shukatunda, which is arrows, um, and Utsanga, which is a two-handed gesture that denotes uh, an embrace or shyness. So these were some gestures and stances that we thought we could incorporate into the choreography. 
uh, enough to chat. How about we show you the full <laughs> piece? And uh, uh, I encourage you, if you'd like, to look up for some of these things and write them down so we can maybe discuss them in the Q&A. Um, but one of them would be Abhinaya or representational gestures. So where you might see a gesture looking like um, something you would do in real life, holding something, doing something. Uh, second is dance music rhetoric, so where the musical gestures and dance gestures might correspond um, in ways that are apparent to you, as well as any significant or striking mudras, uh, hand positions, some that we discussed earlier. Let's go. Uh, translation is available in English, so I hope that will help you to follow along as well. <laughs>
Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so now you know what it looks like and we'll go into some of the further considerations that arose after we uh, had started working on this in the studios. Um, oh, what happened? Okay, yes. Um, yeah, uh, one of these things was text and subtext. So if we think about a lot of Baroque areas, we chose them for their affiliation with Afekten Lera. Um, but what we did not account for was how few words Baroque arias typically have. So for comparison, there are four lines of text in Vadoro Pupile and 22 in Lalita Lavanga from Gita Govinda. So um, a lot fewer words to work with. And so instead of coming up with 10 different ways to say the same text through gestures, we came up with inserting some subtext, especially for some of the other longer pieces. Um, it's not so obvious in Vadoro Pupile, um, but in some other pieces like uh, Non Disperar, um, there's a, in the opera, she is planning to seduce Caesar. So while she's singing uh, the praises of love, we have her uh, putting on makeup, <laughs> like she's getting ready to go and seduce him. Um, and that helps to keep things creative and fresh. Um, yeah, for second point, I'll uh, pass it to Leah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. And then uh, we also encountered this basically along the whole process, but was how, how much of the traditional elements to incorporate and what, what should be our guiding principle for that? Like, should we try to take um, the existing symbols from Odyssey and from Abinaya that already exist, or should we invent new symbols whenever we need it to? Um, and I think that the, the answer for this is not so um, straightforward just yet because this is just one iteration of the process and honestly it's very early on the journey um, to be to be creating a new movement language from scratch so we thought that for this for this time it was best if we, we tried to make the most meaning out of existing gestures but being very careful not to tr tread on existing religious symbols that symbolize gods and goddesses but rather to use uh, more conventional symbols that, that could resonate with the general um, idea of a higher power or idea of a friend in that higher power, for example. So I think in conclusion for this particular performance, we are still looking at trying to make the most out of existing gestures and poses. And for the future, we might consider how we can create new gestures or how we can modify those according to our needs. Mm -hmm. Um, and lastly, Leia talked about multiple character embodiments, so one body switching between uh, two people. Um, we considered this for Vadoro, where occasionally I might uh, be Cesare, um, but we decided against it to keep it a little more streamlined for this piece we felt has a more relaxed feel. Um, but it is done a little bit more subtly in pieces like Ich Folge der Gleichfalls, because in the text, it's a disciple, it's two disciples. So sometimes I will act like there is a friend with me. Um, this is also very commonly used in Odyssey pieces. Um, like Radha's friend uh, will, will be sort of one of the narrative characters. And so uh, suggesting the presence of a friend is, is a common, uh, commonly done anyway in, in Odyssey. And a more obvious uh, performance of multiple character embodiment would be in Non Disperar in a recitative before the aria, Cleopatra is arguing with her brother. And this is not commonly done in operas, but I am singing the recit of the brother and Cleopatra. Uh, so it, obviously if I'm, if I'm acting as her brother, I will adopt a different stance and um, try to capture that multiple character embodiment aspect of traditional dance. Okay, and here are some ideas for the future, Leia. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we covered this a little bit just now, but um, one big idea for this project was building a work specific movement language for dramatic staging purposes. And if you all have watched opera recently, or I mean, um, there seems to be a lot of a lot of uh, like aria singing that uses some sort of gestures, but they're often taken from a patchwork of different cultures, like when Egypt is involved, especially there's a bunch of kinds of signifiers that are taken out of nowhere and don't really have historical or cultural basis. So in part to combat that is to look at a very specific tradition and to see how this can inform it in, um, in ways that are not superficial and are not just like a sign language, which is something that we really wanted to avoid. Um, and then uh, on a larger scale, it's to derive general principles for dance music relationships. So we didn't really 
touch on this just now, but um, a way in which we, we got around the repetition of the text was to introduce a narrative in the dance that spanned a different rate from the text. So if there were three repetitions of a single idea, we might consider that as one unit and try to make the logic flow from the, the start to the end while the text is repeating itself, but the dance is like one continuous flow. So this is something that we could only discover upon working upon these things in the studio. And they, they are quite insightful to how we can make a multimedia kind of meaning from both movement and music that was not, yeah, that, that was not so on the nose and, and, and that was really meaningful in many different dimensions. And lastly, um, maybe a singer can speak more about this with expertise, so I'll bring it to Yongan, but it's to attempt a comfortable technique of singing and moving at the same time. Yes, um, and I talked about this just now after um, Ajang Pondwit's presentation, but um, basically, I really wanted the movement to assist the singing and not to hinder it or be like, you sing well despite moving. Um, and if anyone has peeked into the practice room of a singer, we do all sorts of silly things in there. <laughs> we were always moving around, walking around, using our hands. And um, this is something interesting uh, to consider how stylized movements might uh, and representational gestures might help other singers to sing comfortably and also to help to elevate the dramatic um, purposes of the aria. Yep, and with that, we conclude our presentation. This is another old photo of us. Uh, and if you'd like to contact either of us or both of us, we have our email addresses here and our websites. And I think our social media should be on the websites as well, if you prefer to look for us there. Uh, yes, thank you. And we're happy to take some questions now. Sure, um, that that was very fascinating and, and very inspiring, you know, and I, Myself am filled with a lot of questions, but but I'll I'll I I'll try to to narrow it down. Um. So so maybe first let let me make some some comments um on it. Is that you know I feel that there's a lot of potential, um in this kind of, of activity and and you know um for myself when when I when I learned about your concepts and and watched the the performance, um what I felt is that you know the all the gestures that belongs to the Indian dance tradition. So all of them seems to have the specific meaning and and you know there there are other attributes like the rasa and the pava attached to everything in, in, in the way you do. And then and then I, I feel that I really like the way that you try to find um, the parallelism between um, the, the two texts, right? The text from 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 the Bible, right? And and the text from 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 the the, the Indian text. And then um, to use the Indian vocab gesture vocabulary to try to maybe match or translate that, um, you know, when, when you perform. Then when I when I watch it, I feel like there are there are two layers of meaning going on simultaneously um, in my head because um, all all the gesture contains the original meaning as well. So on one layer we. I, I feel that the, I can perceive the original meaning, assuming that I, I remember the, all, all the meaning, right? And then um, when, the, when the gesture itself attached to the words, to, to the, the German lyrics, right? So that, that creates um, both matching and contrasting meanings simultaneously. Do you, do you know what I mean? It, because it's like, um, there's already two languages speaking at once. Right. Um, so I think that 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 is something that that is a pros and cons in itself, and 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 I, and I think it's it's a, I mean for me it's a very good experience that just by looking at, at the performance I already hear at least two or three messages to go together. Um, I I found that quite a fascinating experience just just by watching and hearing. Um, so so I think that's that's good, and and I also recognize the things that you that you are that you think. To did you plan to to find more way into that 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 is to, how to make it more integrate right more make it more more integral and and the the maybe the linear continuation from you know of the gesture from start to end is that something that you're looking for to to make to make um, all the design of the choreograph um, like like more more integral something like that um, yeah integral. Um the movements 
together or you mean integral with the music and the singing? I, I think both. So, so in a linear way, integral one way is in a linear way of, of the gesture only. And the second integral is that vertical between um, the gesture and the text, right? Yeah, so um, that's just my, my, my random comments that, that, that one of many comments that, that just popped up to me when I watched this, but, but I really, really enjoy it. Congratulations. So um, sorry that I, I, I take the time to comment on a personal level. Um, anyone want to comment or want to ask anything? If feel free to, no, some, some believe I'm be typing. Okay, you can just turn on microphone and, and ask. I just want to say congratulations to both of you. I, I really love it and see the connection. And I'm, I'm so grateful that a performer can also be both great in performing and great in explaining it. It's very impressive because some performer is great in performing, but can they cannot explain it. So we don't understand or get to your mind. So thank you. Thank you for having me um, in this session so I can, can open my experience to it. Thank you so much for your kind words. <laughs> um, yeah, both of you. Yeah. Any other um, question or comments? Thank you all presenters and also Dr. Tanapon also for being such a wonderful host for us um, this morning. And thank you so much for wonderful. I think we travels from already from the visual music in Korea to now the merge and the marriage between the two cultures. So that's really amazing. We really learn like our own body, not just only by, by learning the instruments that we are or singing that the instruments that we are kind of familiar with, but also learning that there are also other aspects of cultures like what Ajahn Pantawit has presented to us today. So it's a huge um, thanks to, to that we have learned today. And thank you for Dr. Nenia for putting up such a big questions. And like we were just discussing off record that we might want to do kind of like another symposium just based on this kind of idea. So thank you very much, all presenters. Also, thank you, um, Dr. Tanapon, for your kind of vast knowledge. You, you kept kind of surprised me with even more things that you know about all these things. So thank you very much, Han, Dr. Tanapon, and for moderating the sessions and adding more understandings about um, the things we have just present. So thank you and have, um, just before you guys leave, I just need to know, uh, let you know what's happening in the afternoon. We have one uh, more sessions of presentings and keynote and paper presentation by Royal Conservatory of The Hague. And this will be presented by Dr. Paul Cranen um, in the topic that is really relevant to what's happening today. So you can see already how the students are doing. So we as a higher education institution, I think it's really important and we have to be up to date to the current with um about our curriculum and the things that we are teaching them so that um the Hague will be presenting what they are doing and then so that's uh, dr paul cranen and then the second part of the sessions um for today's afternoon is going to be the some of the example by the students from the Hague, and you will see like it will be presented by the head of master research at the royal conservatory of the Hague. So let's come and meet us again at 2 p.m. and 2 p.m. Bangkok time. And then in the evening, we will also have another theme premiere by Dr. Sean David as well. So it's also about the ideas of um, music um, in the Philippines. So please um, stay with us for the whole day. And then tomorrow we have a, a sessions in the morning where we will now invite people who are under 30 or very near to 30 to speak on Monday. We had all these teachers speaking. So now on Friday, we're gonna hear a lot more from the young voices. So if you are, um, have any ideas to share with us, if you want to uh, propose a theme for the next year's symposium, do join in tomorrow morning for this session. So thank you very, very much. Have a good lunch. Hope you ha, and then I'll see you later. Thank you all presenters. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you so much. Ah, so Thank you.